And I just, I feel like I can relate to a lot of different teenagers. So that's the voice that I'm being here today. To talk about things that I've been through that maybe you or your family or your kids are going through. And to say how and where I needed help in these situations. My mindset is a lot different from teenagers. A lot of them, I mean, like my question. So what I say won't work for everyone. This is just for me to talk about my experience and for what I think would have helped me. One of the hardest things in my life has been loss. It's something that everyone goes through at some point. It's a pretty big <coughs> word, really. Maybe you lose a job, lose a state championship, or lose a loved one. I went through a lot of months, or I went through a couple months where I dealt with so much loss in so little time. I lost one of my best friends to suicide. That's still one of the hardest things that I cope with every day. He was 14 years old. I loved him so much, and I felt like I let him and his family down. After the loss of my friend, my community was a wreck. We're a rather small town, and had never experienced something like this. It was obvious that the adults in our school didn't know how to handle the situation. I mean, you can't blame them. They weren't expecting something like this to happen, ever. But it was really hard for the kids who were close to this boy, and we didn't get the help that we needed. The boy was in middle school. In high school, I will say I'm appreciative that they had professionals come in and talk to some of us. How they picked us was weird though. The counselor would like, poke their head in the classrooms and whoever looked the fattest got called into the hall. And then they sent us to the library and I could not believe the kids who were chosen to be in that room. I kept waiting for my boyfriend at the time to show up because they were so tight. Ooh, I'm gonna play Xbox together every single night. But he didn't look sad enough, so they wouldn't let him come to the library. The therapists that were there did a really good job letting our support group cry and reminisce of the times that we had. I think that they helped us and that they did all they could for us. But after the teachers made us go back to class, and that was it. No checkup from the counselor, nor did we see the therapists again. As I said, we were a grade apart, so in the middle, or er, we were a grade apart, so we didn't go to the same school at the time. I spoke to a few different kids from his class, and their experience was so much different than mine. One of his friends told me she will never forget the therapist that she talked to. The therapist asked her simple questions and then told her the effects and stages of grief. The girl said she couldn't express how much that helped her all of them. As time went on, she was angry at the world about her friend's passing. And because the therapist told her it was okay, that it was normal to deal with it the way she did, she didn't feel like she was losing her mind or being affected any differently than anybody else. Another girl I talked to from this class said the good thing was the teachers and the staff taught them that it was okay to be sad and to mourn. It's important to go through that process. And then they showed the students that by example and were very patient with them the next week, knowing what they were going through and encouraging them to really feel those emotions. One thing she thinks could have been better is talking about it more as a school <coughs> or in class to get a little bit more closure. So I was a wreck from the unexpected loss. And a little bit after that happened, on a cold morning in September, I went outside to feed my horses, and my horse Rudy couldn't walk. He was a horse that I could do anything on. I'd won the state in breakaway on him, won a bunch of money running barrels. He was just so dependable that I could always count on. He had more personality than any horse I've ever been on. I get it, a lot of you might not know a lot about horses. So an easier way to describe it might be to say I turned down $50,000 for him when he was just a baby. I, I couldn't sell it. <coughs> well, that morning he bucked while playing in his pen and shattered his leg. We had a vet come and x-ray it, and they said it was impossible to repair. They couldn't even make him comfortable. 
the only option that we had was to put him down. Four days after that happened, another one of our horses were activated. We gave him some medicine. It seems like it might have been working. <coughs> that next day we went out, he was acting all loopy, wouldn't eat, he wouldn't drink. And that night, he died. Crazy things just kept happening that were out of my control. My best friend was gone. Two of my horses had died. <laughs> then, a couple months later, a guy accidentally killed one of my horses. Yeah, it was an accident. He didn't mean to. Under a month later, <laughs> we had another horse get rushed to the vet. They said she had rotten guts. We bought her like that. She had them forever. She just happened to die when she was on our hands. So that left me with four dead horses in four months. And that took me to a really low place in my life. I hated horses and rodeo and didn't want to let anything else into my life that would probably lead me to. I know to a lot of you, probably like, um, yeah, that sucks, but it happens. They're just pets. Yeah, it does happen. But horses are my whole life. Before I became dedicated to suicide prevention awareness, my entire world revolved around these animals. I'm an only child. I have two step siblings that live with us, but the last one graduated in 2013. So I didn't grow up with a sister who I could play Barbies with or a brother who I could wrestle. I had horses and they were a part of my family. Then, all of a sudden, they decided to leave me at peace. <clears throat> this is where I really needed a therapist or someone who wasn't in my family that I could talk to. I had a best friend who made me feel so much lower than this. The second I would start to talk about the things that I needed to talk about, this so-called bestie of mine would make me feel so unimportant. How dare I talk about how much all this loss was affecting my mental health? We needed to talk about what shoes she should wear to the football game that night. My mom was able to see that this girl wasn't a very good friend. Honestly, I was able to see it too. But we'll get back to her later. For now, it's the help that I needed that we're talking about. My mom's now able to see it and talk about, or, and we talked about how she wishes she would have done something to help me. I was going through this hate for rodeo, and my mom's method was to just enter more and go harder. When she was a teenager, she went through so many things, and horses were her only coping method. That was her escape. So she thought that's how it was, and that's what I needed to do. But what I needed was mental health. Parents, I know you might not be comfortable asking or even telling your kids that you're taking them to therapy. But as a teenager, I have to say I was not comfortable <clears throat> asking my mom for help. I thought she would think I was dramatic. And I felt ashamed for being as sad as I was. I wish I would have asked her for help or she would have taken initiative and helped me in some way. As I said earlier, I might not be your typical teenager. A lot of kids are going through a rebellion and won't even look their parents in the eyes. I don't know what kind of advice to give here because I've never been that kid. My mom and I recently talked about my mental health during all this loss and how I wish I had professional help. She brought up a part of my childhood that I don't have. I grew up with many daddies and daddy's wife issues. In elementary school, I had to go to his house every other weekend, and I would cry and cry, and it got to be such an issue that it was affecting my school. So my mom and the secretary, who was so good about trying to help me, decided that I should see, decided that I should go see the school therapist. So I did just that. I really don't remember a lot of it. I was in elementary school. <clears throat> but at one point, that man busted all the trust that I invested in him. He brought my dad in and had us talk together. I felt like the therapist took my dad's side of the story and that he didn't believe me. 
and that started some major trust issues. When my mom brought this up, it made sense on why she was hesitant to find that help that we could trust, and it wouldn't hurt me anymore. We're taking a break here and going back to something I brought up earlier. In my last presentation I did at a high school, I talked a lot about my recent ex, my ex-boyfriend. The catch is, I have nothing bad to say about that man. He helped me in so many ways. But when you bring up this best friend of mine, the girl, we gotta keep this short and to the point. Inviting. It's everything. I didn't realize at the time that how this girl treated me was only making things worse for my mental health. Since being out for under her influence, oh my god, I turned into an awesome woman. I started my own t-shirt company. I travel to different schools and I speak about this or I speak, and it's because of my positive mindset that I'm able to have. I'm not constantly being told that I'm not good enough. If you or someone you love is in that toxic hole, get out of it, or help them get out of it. You deserve so much better because you are the best. I'm not sure if the combination of her and I created that toxic friendship, but I do know that we are both better people since our friendship ended. My final note is a rather simple one, but broken into two parts. Number one, express your feelings. I think for the older generation, it's harder, but even some millennials struggle with it. One of the saddest things that I see is when somebody loses a parent who wouldn't use the terms, I love you, or I'm proud of you. Dr. Katie, or Dr. Kathy actually said something similar about this this morning. As a young woman, it makes me feel so good when my parents value me. I truly believe the toughest thing you can tell someone is that you love them. So be tough and don't be afraid to express how you feel. To be a part of someone's life is nice, but there is no greater feeling than to be valued. Number two. Parents, show up for your kids. Or if you're not going to be there, at least don't lie about it. Yeah, that means she's sticking in regardless. <laughs> <laughs> this might not mean a lot to some of your children, but I know there are some people like me out there. In an average household, you live with your child for 18 years. Cherish those years. I am so lucky to have one parent who hasn't missed any part of my youthhood. I'm going to college next year, and she'll be able to say that she didn't miss out on any part of me growing up. She actually changed her plans around. She's supposed to take her sister to a doctor's appointment. They got it all changed around so she could be here for me today, and that means the world to me. I'm super excited to say that I'll have the table set up telling selling t-shirts that my mom and I made. I actually recently, she was talking about my suicide awareness movement. I made a bunch of, I made 700, I'm, I'm getting nervous here again, I'm sorry. I made a bunch of suicide awareness t-shirts, sold them during the month of September. I ended up selling 733. of suicide awareness, of how important mental health is. I was able to fly back to Minnesota to the SAVE headquarters. That's the organization. I've been donating $5 from every church to this organization. So please stop by and even if you're not interested in a t-shirt and come say hi, I would love to meet you. The fact that you're in this room right now, what I've learned from you guys the last couple days I'm so able to say that I know you and that I've been around you. We've been accomplished. You guys are amazing. So thank you. And last of all, our thing around here has kind of been hope, right? That's kind of been our, our thing around here, a theme around here. So my message of hope is encourage yourself, believe in yourself, and love yourself. Everyone's here for a reason, and your story is just getting started. Thank <laughs> you.